Success always starts with proper technique. What up? It's the champ with Striders Angels Esports, and today we're gonna get back into talking about technique. And uh, I've been getting questions and comments about aiming with your arm or wrist, and I see a lot of questions in general on the topic, and a bunch of the different aiming communities I'm part of. So today we're gonna look at arm and wrist aiming, the advantages of each, and most importantly, how to combine the two. And I'm gonna use a bunch of video examples, and I even broke out my uh, my Photoshop skills to add some visuals for you guys. If this is your first time in the channel, remember to drop a sub for bi-weekly aim training content. And if you've been with me since episode one, welcome back, let's go. We see a lot of debate over what's better, wrist or arm aiming, and it's not really a cut or dry answer. They both have advantages, and by the end of this video, my goal is to have you guys using both in your gameplay at the proper time. So let's start with wrist aiming, and if you're an old as hell gamer like me, uh, this is how you learn to play. And I come from the days of rollerball mice and those tiny little like one foot mouse pads, so you had no choice but to play with your wrist. So with Wrist aiming, all of your mouse motion is going to be controlled by the pivot in your wrist. And the advantages of wrist aiming is that it's really quick and flicky. When I was growing up, I would have one full flick of my wrist uh, make me do a 180. And this can lead to great speed when making flicks or being caught off guard and you have to turn on someone. But uh, there's one pretty big disadvantage to this type of aiming, and that's precision. So let's visualize. If you're making a, a micro adjustment or a really small flick, and you can only move your wrist a few millimeters to do this, it's very hard to consistently maintain precision when you're making a movement that has to be so small. This lack of precision made arm aiming and huge mouse pads become a thing in the eSport community, really starting with the, uh, the Counter-Strike pros. And in arm aiming, you're moving your entire arm to control the mouse, and large movements are going to be a little slower than a quick flick of the wrist at high DPI. But the precision is going to be increased because you don't have to be so, and I want to say kind of like gentle on your mouse when you're under pressure when you're playing at a lower sensitivity and using your arm. So now if you've stuck with my videos from episode one, you know there's a centimeter per 360 range that I think is ideal. And uh, there are going to be outliers who are going to be successful being higher or lower. But if you look at like, like basketball with Lonzo Ball or Sean Merriman, and they have ugly as hell jump shots, but they're successful, it works for them. But it's definitely not correct. And I'm a firm believer that proper mechanics will always improve your play. And uh, if you didn't watch the episode, I think 20 to 40 centimeters per 360 is kind of that, that ideal zone to use both your arm and your wrist and get precision and speed. Speed, and I myself play at 35 cm's. The reason I bring the sensitivity range up is I'm going to put a graphic on the screen right now and remember I said ideally you want to be using both your wrist and arm to aim and if you're in the range I recommended you will be. So let's look at the picture. I have it broken off into sections. If you look at the middle section consider that your wrist aiming area. If you look off at the far corners this is where you'll need your whole arm to reach the target. Now if you play at 20 centimeters your wrist area will be bigger and if you're playing at 40 it'll be smaller. So if we look at your wrist area, here's where you're going to make small flicks and micro adjustments. And for your tracking, you're going to use your wrist on those kind of like wiggling wraiths or someone who's strafing back and forth really close. Now your arm is going to be used for those longer flicks and tracking someone who's going to be moving semi-consistently for a long distance. So think of tracking a moving vehicle in a game like PUBG. You're going to need your arm to track it while it's moving horizontally. Or in Apex, a player that's a decent distance away that's moving towards hard cover and you know they're going to move a good distance, so you'll need your arm to track that. When things get tricky is when you combine them, because some targets might be borderline in the wrist or arm zone, right? And if in doubt, I always say use your arm first. I'm going to show you why. So let's say you start tracking with your wrist, and the target moves out of wrist range. So you need to follow with your arm, but look at the angle my wrist will be in. It's just a horrible angle and just ergonomically terrible. And as you're practicing, uh, you're tracking aim pro or Kovacs, notice when your wrist gets in an awkward position because it means you, you just, you goofed. Now, if you want some practice aiming with your arm, check out 
thin aiming long in Kovax, or look for a similar scenario where the target moves in a pretty consistent pattern over a long distance. They just came out with a smoothish trainer on Aiming Pro. And if you want to work on practicing tracking or moving with your wrist, check out Close Fast Strafe's Easy or any other scenario that kind of replicates that wriggling wraith at close range. After you've isolated them a little bit and if you want to work on kind of combining the two I find that Kata IC long strafes has a good mix of uh of wrist and arm tracking that you need to do so I would check out that drill to kind of combine the both of them I know I talked way too much in this video so like sub comment visit me on twitch and let me know in the comments if you would like a Kovacs or an aiming pro routine next champ out